I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. It is now day two. We're at the second part of the trial. I'm super hyped for it. Hopefully you guys are too. No more talking. We're just going to jump right into it. If you guys are cool with that, you're down with that. Everybody get ready and buckle up because here we go. Ooh, I was a little hyped in that intro, huh, guys? December 27, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. I am ready to give some objections, some take that, some take that, some hold that. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well. Apparently, the prosecution is also ready. Who is the judge here anyway? Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Uh, very well. No opening statement, so... Oh, there we go. Not so fast, judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. Right. Of course. A prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. That's how long your wife says you last. Order! Order! Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? Objection. No, don't object that! Bah! Must you question everything? It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now! Right! I call my witness, my decisive witness to the stand. It's that mysterious boat shop owner. Yeah, Yogi Yanni, right? Yeah, this sleepy snot nose bubble dude. Witness, state your profession. Huh? I, uh, I am the proprietor of the restaurant, The Wet Noodle at Gord Lake. And I, uh, also rent boats. The night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, uh yup, yup I was. Please testify. Wait a second. We still haven't heard who this old guy is. Raise an objection, let it slide. Nah, objection! objection! What? That was late! Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Objection. Don't object my objection, dog. Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. Bah! I have predicted this trial will end in three minutes. Don't wag that finger at me. Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. Yeah, right. The witness will state his name. How does he always fall asleep? Huh? Well, uh, I'm not really sure. <laughs> what do you mean? My, uh, memory. Your Honor, the witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. Ago, he cannot recall his own name. Hmm, he can't recall, you say? Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we? Witness? Did the Yogi Yanni guy forget his memory too? Or lose his memory too? I think he did. But anyway, there's a testimony. So everybody, right eye, left eye, lock it in. It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. Yep. I was in the restaurant where I uh, rent bolts as usual. Then I heard a bang! Yup! That was it? Oh, okay. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. And then I heard another bang! Just about then, the boat comes back to shore, and a man walks by my window. Okay, we're definitely gonna question that man. Hmm, very well! I'd like to begin the cross-examination! Objection! What?! Why not?! Tell me why, right now! There was nothing to question in my witness's testimony! Ergo, no need for cross-examination! Besides, there are only 10 seconds left before our three minutes are up! <laughs> Judge, your verdict, now! Uh, yes, Mr. Wright? Cross-examine, come on, why would I click don't cross-examine? What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness! Very well, you may begin. Excuse me, Mr. Von Karma? Three minutes just passed. I see. Well then, let's just take our time. You may cross-examine the witness. Why is this guy so moody? Does he have a booty call? Cross-examination, let's get it! It was the night of the 24th just after midnight. Yup, okay, nothing wrong with that. 
I was in the restaurant where I uh, rent boats as usual, okay? That doesn't seem sus at first, but we might come back to it later. Then I heard a bang. A uh, yup. Okay, let's hold it! And where did the bang seem to come from? What? Already? It's been like two seconds. From the lake, I figure. Are you certain? Uh, yup. Good. Continue! When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just afloat on the lake. Then I heard another bang. Hold it! So you heard two gunshots total? Oh, uh, yup. That's what Lada said in her testimony yesterday. But why did the gun say it fired three times? Just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. But what man? We're gonna hold it! By your window? Oh, uh, yup. By my window. Right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. This is a rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this. That man was the defendant. He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. Hold it! Are you sure? Uh-oh. Dad! Yes, Poppy, wake up! Dead CERN, kid! He said I can't believe he's dead, as he was walking by too. But that doesn't mean that he killed him. That just means, oh my god, I can't believe this man is dead! Yes, discuss. Discuss what I said. Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him! That Edgeworth boy! This sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. The witness is clearly bashing and saying he has no memory. Why should we even take into account his witness testimony? We should throw him out the court! Von Karma. He lured me into cross-examining so he could set me up for a fall. <laughs> Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. I'd better act quick, or this trial is going to be over. Raise an objection, wait and see what happens. No, we got to object right now, baby. Objection! Your Honor, we proved in yesterday's trial that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Objection. Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun? And the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand? Exactly! That is easily explainable. He could have wiped his prints after he fired! You are ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything in this witness's testimony is true! Hmm... The judge is lost in thought. What should I do? Raise an objection again. We're gonna object that objection to that objection! Your Honor, this witness claims that Edgeward said, I can't believe he's dead. But his word is all we have. If you were telling a lie... Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently, you have yet to realize even this basic fact. If you say his testimony is a lie, show us proof. Uh, Nick, do we have evidence? It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please. Can you hear me, sis? Please. We need your help. Nick needs you. <laughs> Three minutes was perhaps too high an expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Enough. The witness may leave the stand. That was bad. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. Nor is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. What? No! Huh. This court finds the defendant Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Ah. Oh. Okay, so I'm not supposed to cross-examine that guy. Alright, so let's go back and let's redo that. Wait! Wait, what? 
Who said wait? Oh, who was that just now? Me! Huh? Whoa! Larry! Mr. Harry stinking freaking butts! Oh, what are you doing here? Listen, you gotta listen to me. I, I was, I was there in the park the night of the murder. I, I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday. But today I remembered it. Remembered what? The gunshot. I heard it too. Yeah, you heard it too, everybody. Bow cuts for everyone. Arrgh. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for adjournment. One moment, Mr. Van Karma. So, you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did. A gunshot. That night. I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony. Then I realized something he said was different from what I remember. Anyhow, I just can't sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. Yeah, not our Edgy boy. It's, it's just not right. I'll testify. Let me testify. Yeah, audience. I mean, jury. Let him testify. Erdy. Erdy. Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick, this is it. Larry's given us one final chance at this. She's right. If only it wasn't Larry. He could make things even worse. Mr. Edgeworth was just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. You're right. Okay. Your Honor, if there is another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Right here, right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. What is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now! What? The court will adjourn for a five-minute recess. After that, we will hear this new witness. Court is adjourned. Woo! Saved by the butts! Let's go! December 27, 1028 AM, District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. That whole thing took 28 minutes? God damn, baby! Whew! That was too close! Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. Huh. I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night? Yes. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Oh, right. And he found the balloon in the air tank that night? Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth? Huh? You say something right? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It... it's nothing. Huh? Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. Yeah, please tell us something, you know? We're trying to defend you. When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. I see. Right? Yeah? This might be our chance. Our chance? Von Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfect prepared witnesses. Perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No 10-minute trial this time. We'll milk this one for all it's worth. Hey, it was 15 minutes. 15! Everything's on Larry now. 
All right, we're going to milk that butt. We're going to milk his butts. December 27, 1035 a.m. District Court. You guys know where it is. We were just there. And now we're back. Hello, everybody. Court is now back in session. Witness, please testify to the court about everything that you saw on the night of December 24th. Right. Leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Von Karma didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. Witness testimony, guys. Pay attention to the butts. That night, I was out in the boat on a lake. I was looking for something, and I uh, found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back at the rental shop dock. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Hmm. That was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. You're right. All right, time to cross-examine Mr. Larry Butts. That night, I was out in a boat on the lake. Okay, that seems pretty good, pretty standard. I was looking for something. I uh, found it. What were you looking for? Hold it! Looking for something? Uh, yeah. Mr. Butts, what was it you were looking for? What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Most likely, he was hunting for this Gordy. That's surprisingly close to the truth, in a sense. This is all irrelevant. Let's get it over with. So I quietly slipped the boat bag at the rental shop dock. Okay, why would you do that, though? Around what time was that? Uh, well, let's see. I figured I was out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12. Yeah. You're not sure? Hey, don't give me that face. I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. But there was a boat. We have a picture of a boat. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? What? Guys, what are you discussing? Arda! Arda! Well, Mr. Butts? Whoa, whoa! Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case. Huh. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. But there were multiple gunshots. So, you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Huh. Well, Nick? Huh. It was a pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should just start working on the contradictions. Sorry. I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. You know what? Why don't you just get good? Don't call your sister. Just get good. Okay, here's what we're going to do, guys. He's going to say he heard one shot. He went home. But Lotta's testimony said she heard two shots. So what we're going to do, we're going to wind it up and... Objection! Wait a sec, Larry. What? You only heard one bang? You sure? That's what I said. But Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. An old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please. Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? Mr. Butts! What? 
You only heard one gunshot? Are you sure? Um, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Eh? Not sure? How could you not be sure? Yeah, well, I, uh, I might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude. With my headphones. What? Arda! Arda! And stop that booing! Mr. Butts! You were listening to the radio with your headphones? Yeah! So what? That a crime? I listen to my radio! Everybody listens to the radio! What's the big deal? Hmm... Mr. Von Karma, your opinion? Waste of time. I do not accept this witness, nor a shoddy testimony. Hmm... Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? That's enough or continue, but we don't really have anything else. So we gotta continue. He might reveal something down the line. Your Honor. Please. Please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Bah. Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Right. Leave it to me. I wouldn't if there were another way out of this. Believe me. Witness testimony number two. So we got a double lock in this time, guys. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an all-request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real booming loud like. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. Huh. That wasn't that bad. You were listening to your radio at a high volume? Yeah, what's the big problem? Can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drum beat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Objection! Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer, the guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is, when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Very, very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing the charade. I feel like we got him right where we want him, you know? But we're about to cross-examine that ass, so let's go. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an all-request show on the radio, see? What show? Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you were listening to? This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. The witness was listening to the radio. That is all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Butts, how loud was your radio set to that night? I was listening to it real booming loud like. But I'm sure I heard the gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. What did he say? What did she say? Oh, it was a she? Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what a radio DJ said do us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. We should care because it'll tell us the exact time when she said it. Maybe we can go back and listen to it and see exactly when the time was, right? Right? We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh, well, how do you know if we don't ask, hmm? Fine, very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. This is the most ludicrous testimony I've ever heard. But there is one gleaming ray of hope in there. I've got to press it until we get to the bottom of what happened. It's only being alone on Christmas Eve. Okay, so if she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, that means it had to have been around like 11.50 p.m. or somewhere close to there. Okay, so let's question this. Are you sure? Of course I am. 
She had this real sexy voice. Hmm. Maybe Von Karma was right. I'm not sure how that helped us at all. This is the most ludicrous testimony I've ever heard. But there is one gleaming ray of hope in there. I've got to press it until we get to the bottom of what happened. Okay, just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Okay, I gotta look at my evidence, and I gotta figure it out. Let's see. Taken automatically on... T oh! Taken automatically on 1225 at 12.15am. He said that he heard a bang when the lady said, hey, it's almost Christmas. We got this. I got it. You guys are gonna wind that up for me while I get to it. Keep winding it up for me. She's gonna say, hey, it's almost Christmas. Okay, here we go. Taking at 12.15 a.m. I'm gonna wind it up and... OBJECTION! Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easy. Is there something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas, when he heard the gunshot. Indeed. And? Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But he should have heard the gunshot after midnight. This photograph is irrefutable proof of this fact. Let's see what the time was on the photo taken when the gun triggered Miss Hart's camera. 12.25, 12.15 a.m. 15 minutes after midnight on Christmas Day. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Yes. Yes, bull cuts. Clear contradiction. Erda. Erda. What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However... This witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. What? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butt's claim that he heard a gunshot before midnight? Larry is right. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim? Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight, you say? Okay, okay, okay. I don't know how I'm going to do that. <laughs> I really do not know how I'm going to do that. But, let's see here. Hmm. Huh. Just after midnight, okay? That's what Lada said. Okay, so this second lake photo, it only triggered when this camera hears a bang. And this picture was clearly taken right here. It says 11.50 p.m. at 12.24. We are going to present that. And that's a matter of fact. Look at this photograph. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lada Hart with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24, 11.50 p.m. Oh? Hmm. But... There's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha! Correct! There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that is the case. Then, where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor! That night, there were two sets of gunshots with a 25-minute pause between them. But why? Why would this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes? There was no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why, the witness could have sneezed, triggered the camera. Hey! My nose was clear that night, man. Clear! Hmm... Well, Mr. Wright, 
There's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50 p.m. was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence if you have any. Wait, it could be the gun because it was fired three times. Lada and the old guy only heard it twice, and Larry only heard it once, so that's a total of three times. Okay, so this has got to be it. This is my evidence. The murder weapon? Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, then, was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Woo! Man, we are cooking this like barbecue chicken. Arda! Arda! Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Uh-oh, I better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes? Oh! What's wrong, Nick? I have it. I have it. Uh-huh. Remember the case with the steel samurai? Uh-huh, yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya. Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edgeworth's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm gonna run with it. Right. I mean, is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. But you just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright? The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? <laughs> so, you finally realized the truth? There could be no other murderer here than Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well, the guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit, it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes. But this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? Isn't it obvious? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 12.15. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who the two men on the boat are. The murderer and Hammond, Edgeworth and the murderer, Edgeworth and Hammond. Whoa, the murderer and Hammond, right? It can't be Edgeworth and Hammond. It's the murderer and Hammond. It was the murderer and Robert Hammond. What are you saying? That contradicts what you just told the court. You said that Robert Hammond had been killed 25 minutes before this gunshot. Yes, that's right. Well, I get confused, man. I get very confused. Also, might I mention, the defendant, Mr. Edgeworth, has admitted to being on that boat. It's gotta be Edgeworth and the murderer. Because Hammond's already dead. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. Oh, that makes sense. What? Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous! 
Mr. Wright. Tell us the name of the murderer, then. The murderer's name? Right. It's... Uh... I don't know. Isn't it Yanni Yogi? It's not Lotta Heart, and it's not Miles Edgeworth. I don't know. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You don't know? Blah! Again! You waste my time! I don't know because he never told us! The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop! That old man! At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then! Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of the crime was not on a boat? What? Well then, where did the murder take place? Inside of his boat place. Show the judge where the murder really took place. Easy. It is right over here. Here, of course. The boat shop where he lives. That way, he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. Yeah, that's Larry right there on that boat. <laughs> Just cruising. That night, he was out on the lake on a boat, searching for something. He finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop! Man, we are too good. Mr. Wright! What happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. You never know. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. He even had the bird on his shoulder? Or was it on a thing? This was around 11.50pm. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond! Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out in the middle of the lake. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. Because the first shot missed? To create a witness. Yeah, to create a witness. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then... Oh, he fell into the lake. The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. And then Edgeworth picked it up, and then the caretaker swam back to shore into his little shack, and then nobody ever suspected a thing. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. You like that? You like that, Bone Karma? You like that, jury? Everybody likes that? Bailiff, bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly! Ooh, man. That got spicy. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Oh, Edgy Boy takes the stand! Finally! What's up, my guy? Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said? 
Yes. Well? Why did you go to the lake that night? What Rydus said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed, Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry. I can't say what it was. Hmm. Your Honor, sir. Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the shop either. What? What should I do? We'll find him quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. Oh, he gone. He long gone. Wow. So, he just straight up dipped. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is the boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him, and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. Wow. That wrapped up way faster than I thought. December 27, 122 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. I'm pretty sure his name is Yanni Yogi, but we just gotta prove it. Yay, Nick! You did it! Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with this testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? D did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably gonna get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax! I'm sorry. But I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth. No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... Hmm, I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Wait, wait, is he the one that killed his dad? To be continued! No! <laughs> Edgeworth, you can't leave us on that cliffhanger. Not edgy boy. Wow. All right, guys. Well, he wants to tell us about a time a murder took place, and he said that he's the one who did it. If you guys want to see that as soon as possible, you guys better leave a like on that video because we went ham on today's case. We are going to solve it in the next episode. I promise you guys. If you're all excited for that, make sure you give this video one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude.